Hey everybody and welcome back. Right, well, we're uh, press on today. I've just had a visit from Steam Shop who brought me my head back with new valve guards in and the valves seats recut and everything so I can put the head together, put the rocker box together, we can put that on, put the exhaust on. We can get a lot done this week. So, uh, I've been thinking about comments. I'm going to instigate a slightly new policy. Now, I get a lot more comments than I used to. Not the sort of hundreds that some people get. But, uh, and I do read them all. But sometimes I've noticed I get asked the same question by several people. So I'm sort of repeating myself. So I thought what I would do from now on is, fingers crossed I can remember, I'll make a note of questions and then when we do the little intro, I'll answer them. Okay, and then that way I'm not having to reply to a bunch of you with the same same uh, answer. But for other bits and pieces, I might well answer you. So, okay, on that premise, we'll start here. First of all, that little hole there isn't a drain. It's actually tapped 2BA and it, uh, it matches up with a hole in the outer case. All right, because you mentioned... You remember somebody mentioned that that was the breather and that suddenly struck me, yep, he's quite right, that's the time breather through the hollow comp shaft. I had a comment about uh, the repair job here. You know, there were a bunch of ways I could have done it. You know, I could have Healy coiled it, all sorts of things. One chap mentioned I'd just uh, tap it out to sort of the next larger size on the unified thing. So it would have been, a, I don't know, 12, 24, whatever. Well, I didn't want to do that because I know when I'm working on jobs, there's nothing worse than to find you've got to put something on that has two bolts and they're two different bolts. So I wanted to keep that the same. Uh, what else? Oh, I had a mention about dry clutch plates. Don't worry about that. Clutch material now is completely different to the cork, which you used to soak and what have you. And anyway, as those of you who watched me before will know, before I ever start to run this engine, I'll have kicked it over to get oil right round to the rockers. And by that time, the clutch is well oiled. I make sure everything's lubed before I start. And I don't, you know, perhaps if I ran out, put a brand new dry clutch in, wheeled it outside, took it up to maximum revs and did sprints up and down the drive, it would affect it. But you can build your clutch up dry, which makes it a lot easier to do because you're not getting clarted with oil. And then just put your oil in and kick it over a few times with the clutch plates open and what have you. It'll be, it'll be fine. Um, well, the other thing was the clamp bolt for this. If I'm reading them right, I had people that mentioned, they've asked me if I put the clamp bolt on before I put this cover on. Clamp bolt doesn't go inside. I also had a couple of people mention that the clamp bolt goes inside the outer cover and the hole in the outer cover is just to get at it. That's not right either because this is flat and the outer cover is flat where it goes there. So there's nowhere to have the head of a bolt. And anyway, the bolt that goes in is a long one and the outer cover, the hole is countersunk to take the head. And if you look at the parts book, it's a long bolt. So we're all right there. So I think uh, what we're gonna do, oh, is, uh, well, I'll bring you in to show you it. First job we're gonna do is this little bit of machine in here on the outer cover for an O-ring. And I'll explain that a bit more when I bring you closer to have a look. Right, now, before I forget, just seeing the uh, clutch cable there remind me, I was also asked about, shouldn't there be a lock nut on the little adjuster screw in the center of the clutch? Yes, there is. It was just laid there at the side. I haven't put it on yet. All right, so, I mentioned trying to put an oil seal in the outer cover, but I decided I didn't have enough uh, meat there, but that I might put an O-ring on. Now, I think a couple of people maybe thought that I was just gonna push an O-ring on there and then put the cover on, because they mentioned that it would sort of crush up the oil ring and the kickstart wouldn't turn. That's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a groove in the case. Now, what I've done here is I've made a little test piece because I had to make a tool up, which I'll show you. So there I've cut an oil ring. This is the right size to go on that shaft. I've cut an oil, an oil ring groove, get my words right. 
and that will just go on there like that it's just a nice fit see because don't forget this shaft isn't spinning it's going to turn at kickstart speed maybe two or three times hopefully no more than two and that's it and then it might be done like that another couple of times during the day so we don't have to worry about this spinning in the o-ring all right so what we're going to do now is go over to the mill and i'll show you what we're going to do to get that o-ring inside there right now before we uh, get started on the mill i thought i'd just show you the tool that i ground up so there it is it's made out of a piece of half inch round high speed steel the actual cutter there is 90 thou wide and you can see the the rake and everything so it worked perfectly on that little test piece so i'm uh, i'm sure it'll be fine on the actual job so let's get that set up i've got this bolted down through the gear chain shaft i've also got it here it's pressed up against the vise and it's clamped down there and actually that bolt is against the edge so it's not going to go anywhere right we're going to use the uh, Blake coaxial to find the center so let me uh, this is going to be one of these awkward ones where I'm maybe going to be in front of myself so what we're going to do is this roughly where I want it do this is to uh, set it up roughly by eye then I put this in neutral and just turn this I'll show you by hand to get it pretty close and then we'll set it going and use it the way it's meant to be used so I start see it's at one side Oh, tell you what, I'll pull you in so you can see that. So I put it to one side. Set this to anything just to make it easy. So it's on 20. And then as I turn it around, it's going up. I just take it to the opposite side of where it was. which is about there so it's actually a few under so let's move it over towards the 20 whoops wrong way let's move it to about there then we'll turn it to the front say so it's 40 right that's going up it's gone one hole one and ten so if we go a half five and then a half a revolution so there's a five and then we'll take it round to 25 and then we should find see that's quite reasonable so now we'll start the, oh this going let me go and switch the converter on right now it'll work i've got it set at 60 rpm so there you can see it bouncing so we'll try this axis first that's getting worse Just do it one axis at a time. X to Y, X to Y. Oops. 
I'll get it spot on and then I'll change over to the cutting tool. Now I've taken out the indicator and changed over to the actual boring head with our cutter in. I've also already gone down and got myself lined up. This is roughly 200 thou thick, it's just slightly over. And as I said, this is about 90. So what I did was I touched off on the edge and then I went down 140. So that's 50 from the top, because I touched off on this one, so there's 90 and then 50. So there's 50 below and 50 above. What I've also done, the only way I can do this, seeing as I don't have one of those fancy boring heads that you can actually adjust as it's turning, I have to sort of wind it out so it's sort of digging in, and then I turn it a couple of times, and then a bit more. Well, it's very difficult to actually measure how deep I'm going. So what I've done is from the other one I made, which I know works perfectly, I made, I don't think you can see the end of this is bent, I made a tiny little gauge that I can just put in and see how deep I'm going. And also of course, this is all locked down and the DRO's on. I can do it till I think it's about right, lower the table, put the O-ring in, I can actually check it with the, the old kickstart because it's still 5.8 it's not worn and get it right like that just by trial and error it's the only way I could find of doing it with the test piece and it worked for the test piece so we'll do it with this so let me bring this down I'll take this down I should say because that's one of my pet hates here the misuse of bring and take so I will I wish I could get the little windy wheel for this. I haven't got the wheel to wind the fine adjustment for winding this down. So I'm using the uh, the quill handle and it's not that easy. Still, I'm still looking for one. There we go. So that's on a thousand. A thousand. That's on zero. So what I'm going to do now is, I've got these snugged up but not tight because we're doing such light, uh, where's it gone, I'm going to have to keep sticking my head in the way, there it is, I'm doing such light cuts, we're fine, so let me wind this out. So it's tight so I know it's digging in a little bit. I've got it set at a really slow speed and we're just going to spin it two or three times. Literally what I'm doing is a spring cut each time. Do it a bit more. Right, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and I think this should be it. So there's our 5 eighths oil, I keep calling it an oil seal, it's an O-ring. It's going to go in there like that. There it goes. And that seems to be just 
proud of the groove that's nice all right let's take it off here and go and try it on the bike just thought I'd show you that there it is in there okay let's put it on the uh, on the kickstart all right let's see how it feels like now I'll put everything together inside here and uh, Yeah, that's just nicely on the rubber that should work well okay let me put the kickstart spring in and then uh, actually I think what I'll do is the kickstart spring in I'm gonna put some oil in I'll put the kickstart on and we'll uh, turn this over till we get some oil out of the, the rock feed right I'm going to uh, put the head together I've got my new valves all new springs and of course we've had new valve guides put in and Dave actually did a really good job on these because when he took the old guides out again whether somebody's worked this end I don't know one of them was oversized the inlet I think was a perfect fit the uh, exhaust or it could have been the other way around I can't remember just dropped in so what Dave did was went through all his stock there found a guide that was the right OD and ID and then he cut it to length for me turned the taper onto it and turned the groove for the circlip so thank you very much Dave and that's all now fitted together and uh, uh, can you see that yeah nice newly cut seats so I've put valve in so many times to be honest I'm not going to show you doing it again I'm just going to sit down now and put this head together right there's the valves in so next thing to do is to put the rockers back in the rocker box right we're going to put the rockers in the rock box now now with a single like this you can't put them in the wrong way around because this is the way we'd be looking at it from the right hand side of the engine so this is the exhaust side this is the inlet side now I marked them but if you look you'll see there's the valve adjustment end to go there and here the little nub is there to go on the push rod see if you had them the wrong way around you couldn't put them in because this has got to go over there all right so the only thing to uh, take care of and again it's something you can't put on the wrong way around but it can be annoying is as you can see this is two different diameters so the thrust washers one fits on that larger diameter and one fits on the smaller so if you put them on the wrong way around you'll be trying to put them in and you won't understand why it goes on and it's because of course this fat bit gets the small washer and it can't go any further so you've got to make sure you've got your two thrust washers the right way around so how do we put them together well this isn't exactly technical we're going to swap these over because I'm going to turn that upside down right so we'll take the various bits off in order there's a thrust washer at this end also right so now we're this way up so we've got that there for the push rod so all we're going to do is make sure you're still right here put some oil in there right now then, first thing we've got to do is put that in there and get that washer. Hang on, let me move you around so you can see from the top. Let's see if I can do this now without getting in the way. So I've put it in and I've put the first washer there. 
Now the next thing we need to put in there is big washer, then the spring, then the little washer. So we're going to squeeze those up. fit them in there. This is... <laughs> Sorry but you're in the way. Right. Make sure you keep the washers on the outside of the spring. And you'll notice one side is thinner than the other side. Well not thinner but it's easier pushed in so we'll get that goes in there and this as I say if you've got those two washers the wrong way around then when you start pushing this in it goes so far and it won't go the rest of the way so now we've got to work that So we get it in. Oh. This is murder trying to do it like this. Got something to put your, your washers and your spring in the right place. That big washer's caught on the spring. is ah, there we go so that's through there through one washer through the spring you just keep jiggling it look at this end oh where are we can you see that you can just see it in there right let's see if we can just tap it through da -da 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 -da. It's still catching on this big washer. I know it is. <sighs> Hang on, I'm gonna have to get a little screwdriver. Right, a lot of fiddling with two screwdrivers later. The big washer had just got stuck on the spring. So now it's in. It'll tap all the way through. Come out the other side. I'll tap that in the rest of the way and I'll put the other one on. Right then, there it is, tapped all the way in. You can tell it's all the way in. You can hear the shoulders hitting on this metal. And there, you can see the spring. See, there's our little bit of side thrust taken up with that. So as I say, let me put the other one in. Getting all this clarted up, look. Put the other one in and then we can see about putting the head and the rocker box on. Right, well, this is going to be it for the day. I was hoping to get the, uh, actually, it for the week because this is late. I was hoping to get the head and the exhaust and everything on. But, just to show you, you should never listen to me. I made another mistake. And nobody on the C15 group picked up on it. 
You remember when I put the oil tank and everything on? I talked about crossing over the oil lines. Well, I've been kicking myself stupid today on this kickstart. Wondering why I couldn't get oil to circulate. So I go to Rupert Ratio's book. And the crossover of the oil lines is only for the end-fed cranks. And this isn't an end-fed crank. So I had the feed on the return. Now, it's a very good example though of why I always do it this way and kick the engine over until I get oil out the rock of feed. Because if I'd have just started this up, I'd have been standing there looking in the oil tank, wondering why no oil was coming out when it would bang. So what you're looking at is the uh, bit of rubber tubing that the rocker feed goes onto. So if you watch that carefully, come on now. Tell you what, let me put my finger over this hole here so it comes. There you go. Right, take my finger off and it'll still come through. Right, so if it's coming out of there, means it's gone all the way down the pump, through the pump, through the big end, into the sump, up the pickup, back into the pump, and all the way back here. So, God, that was annoying me. I was I really, I kicked, kicked this till I was blue in the face. And then I took the, uh, hang on a second. All right, that's a little bit better manners when I'm talking to you. So as I say, I was kicking and kicking until I was blue in the face. And um, then I took the oil feed and the return line off the bottom and nothing was happening. And my first thought was, oh damn it, you know, there's nothing coming out the return. I'm gonna have to take the pump off and this, that and the other. But then I noticed it was bubbling at the other side. And I thought, wait a minute, let me check on this. So I looked in Rupert Ratio and that's when I found out that these early engines you don't cross the oil lines so what i'm going to do actually to be on the safe side is i'm going to go back to the video when i've mentioned that and you know in that little the notes thing underneath the video i'm going to put in that there's an error in the video because as i say that could be really nasty if you just simply put some oil in started it up and didn't take the precaution of uh, making sure you're getting lubrication round before all right well uh that's going to be it for this week next week we should get a lot done the big thing i'm waiting for is the petrol tank but anyway until then stay safe and enjoy yourselves